The Peregrino Field in Brazil was opened in 2011 by His Royal Highness Crown Prince Håkon of Norway. Now it's getting bigger. We are now starting up the production on our new platform, Peregrino Charlie. Peregrino Phase 2 is an extension to the Peregrino Field. It will add uh, approximately 250 to 300 million barrels of oil and it will extend the lifetime until 2040 for the whole field. In addition, it will create approximately 350 long-term jobs during the operational phase. The $3 billion project also created a lot of jobs in the project phase, both onshore and offshore. Technip FMC Brazil was responsible for everything on the seabed. And the scope is essentially the new subsea infrastructure between the new well at platform C and existing Peregrino main facilities. Most of the surf scope has been engineered and fabricated in Brazil. However, the pipeline had to be spooled in Scotland. We're spooling on the 12 and uh, 10 inch pipeline for uh, the Peregrino Phase uh, 2 project. So as soon as we're finished here, we're going to uh, sail down to uh, Brazil and install the pipeline at the, at the Peregrino field. In the summer of 2019, the first pipelines and subsea equipment were installed at the field. The 9,200-ton jacket was constructed at Herema in the Netherlands. It stands 135 meters tall. Herema has delivered on schedule, on quality and within cost. The best of all, they have delivered on our safety expectations. The basis of the field development is far below the seabed in the reservoir. Peregrino is a huge accumulation with billions of barrels of oil in the ground. And heavy oil fields have a low recovery factor, but we will try to make it as high as possible by, uh, by uh, having a, a sufficiently dense well pattern and also keeping the pressure up by water injection. The new platform Peregrino C has its own drilling unit delivered by Cameron and Nimu in Norway. What we see here is six of the modules for the drilling unit for Peregrino 2. These six modules will be lifted on board and shipped over to Ingleside, Texas. The modules were assembled here to test all systems and functions. One year before the planned sail away, the activity was high at the Kivet Yard in Ingleside, Texas, where the 11,000-ton main support frame was constructed. ACC-wise, we're doing great. Last month, we passed uh, 2 million man-hours, and we have uh, no LTI, you know, no recordable SSA here, which uh, means that uh, we have only seen first aid, no medical treatment, no lost time. The living quarters were constructed at Leirvik in Norway. This is one of the two accommodation floors. There's a total of 60 cabins, each with two beds, making a POB of 120 people. Operations of the new platform were planned in Equinor's office in Rio de Janeiro. Peregrino Charlie utilizes many new technologies. One of the good examples is a Digital Twain, which is a 3D module of the entire platform, or the operator can have it in the iPad in the field. This allows for video conference from the field, both with the offshore control room and the onshore operations center. New digital tools offer several benefits. Increase efficiency, safety, and also help us to optimize energy consumption. So do the gas turbines for power generation on the platform. They are more efficient, reduce cost in the operations phase and reduce the CO2 footprint from the field. The switching from diesel to gas will reduce the emissions by 100,000 tons per year. Late in 2019, big stuff started moving. The jacket left Herema in the Netherlands. In Norway, the living quarter modules sailed away.
and in Texas, the topside and drilling modules started their journey to the field in Brazil. I have a very good feeling today, seeing the sail away of the topside of the Peregrino 2 project. It's a tremendous milestone for everyone being involved in this project. Just now we are on board the Herema's brand new heavy lifting vessel Sleipner, which is going to do the Perugino Sea jacket and topside installation. With the jacket in place, the rest of the platform could follow. 16 modules form a 24,000 ton topside. The first thing, obviously, is to set the um, module support frame, the MSF, which is an 11,000 ton deck. And after that, lifting the living quarter, followed by a number of drilling modules, and finally the flare will be installed. Just hours after Sleipnir finished the installation, Gran Energias Olympia was connected to the platform. It was supposed to accommodate 440 people working on the platform. Now the very intense hookup phase started. And then... Prior to COVID-19, the project was on track and on schedule. When the COVID-19 hit, it was like standing on a rug being pulled away under our feet. Offshore manning had to be downsized several times. Expats, foreign technical support personnel and foreign suppliers were sent home for six months. COVID-19 tests, quarantines and infection control measures have impacted the project for more than two years, adding stress to both personnel and their families. Original plans called for the project to come on stream in the fourth quarter of 2020. Despite the delay, it is still within its $3 billion budget. We had a very strict cost control, we had a very low project growth, and we were lucky, so to say, to hit a market at this low. So we got very good uh, contracts. Drilling operations on the field started in the summer of 2022. Schlumberger Brazil has been awarded the contract for total well delivery. Right now we're drilling the first well from Pregnant to Sea platform. We need to complete the well to start production from the platform. We have 21 wells planned from the platform, but we also have 30 slots that we can increase the number of wells with time. Peregrino Charlie has now produced the very first oil. Peregrino Phase 2 is on stream. Now it's feel really great. We managed to do this thanks to the very good work and the very good stamina of all our project teams and suppliers. Project team has done a tremendous work here. Now it's our responsibility to make sure we have a safe and efficient operation. Okay.